What's up everyone, Zach Seif here. Today we're gonna to go over five tips that you need to know for your next Fractal audio system setup. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Zach Seif. I'm a full-time musician here in New Jersey, and I post videos about what it's like being a musician in today's modern music industry. If you've been around the channel before, you know that I use the Fractal Audio System Axe Effects FM9 and FM3 exclusively, whether I play live or in the studio. And today I have five tips that are gonna save you processing power, blocks, and just kind of help open up the Fractal ecosystem so that you can get more out of less. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is how I integrate several different types of guitars into the same preset. If we take a look here, we have my main preset, Wedding Crasher. And on the input block here, you notice that the output level has this little orange yellow dot here. And what that means is that I have some sort of modifier assigned to it. Now a modifier can be any of these following things, right? So if I right click on this knob, it shows me these different sources. And these are all different ways that I can modify or change what that knob does throughout the preset. Right now I have it set to control switch three. Control switches are just digital buttons is a good way to think about it. And what you can do is you can assign these control switches to your foot switch or to different scenes or what have you. So right now I have it set to one of the buttons on my FC6 foot controller from Fractal. So every time I press that button, the output level of this input block is going to increase by 5 dB. And the reason why I have it set to 5 dB is because that's the difference in volume between this beautiful Music Man Majesty that I use all the time and my custom LSL Satakoi. Since this guitar has a lower output due to its more vintage sounding pickups and the lack of an active preamp like the Music Man does, I wanna be able to use the same preset for both of these guitars. So all I do is compensate the amount of gain that I need in the input block here by increasing the output volume. And again, you can adjust the parameters to do whatever you need it to. One trick that I like to implement in order to figure out how much of a boost I need is I'll play a passage with both guitars and using the tools feature over here, I will go all the way to the preset leveling. That opens up a little sub menu here and when you play, you can see how loud your main guitar is and then how much quieter your secondary guitar is, compensate for the difference, and you're all set to go. Next up is one of my favorite things to do, and it mostly helps when it comes to gain tones and solo tones. We'll take a look at my rhythm preset here. I'm using a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. If you know anything about rectifier amps, it's that they need a little bit of love up front to kind of cut the mud and just kind of make the amp really tight and make it really open up and get it to saturate a little bit sooner at non-deafening levels. So what I like to do here is instead of eat up one of my blocks using the drive block, which depending on the system that you're using, right, the FM3, FM9, or the Axe FX3, and the amount of DSP that you have left over, the drive block may eat up upwards of 10% of your total CPU, and that's a lot for a single block. So what you can do instead is come over to the preamp tab here, and as you notice, the input boost here has the orange dot again. If I right click on that, you notice that it's assigned to control switch one. Control switch one automatically turns on this input boost every time I go to scene seven. I'll show you how I do that real quick before we continue. When you're in the editor here, and this works for all of the fractal units, you can go over to where it says controllers and come down to CS or control switch per scene. And what you can see here is that on the first four scenes are set to off. That means that for my three clean sounds and my mid gain crunch tone, the input boost for the amp will not be turned on. But for scenes five, seven, and eight, which are two of my solo and my heavy rhythm gain tone, they will go on automatically without me having to do anything. This is a huge cheat code right here to save, again, upwards of 10% of your processing power, but also have a distortion boost in front of the amplifier. Now you may be thinking to yourself, yeah, but there's only a boost level. You can't control the EQ and all the other parameters. I don't need to though. The whole point of this is to emulate a tube screamer in front of the dual rectifier where 
the tone is set in the middle and I have no gain coming from the pedal, I'm just cranking the level so that it pushes the front of the amp. So again, I'll switch out to a different sound. You see that it's turned off here on scene four because I don't want it on. But when I engage the solo boost for that tone, now it's turned on. Again, I go back to scene seven, it's automatically turned on so that I always have a super tight distorted dual rectifier sound. Now you may notice that the gain knob is also orange on here. And that's because when we go over to scene number eight, it goes from six to 10. And the reason I do that is so that I can still have the 808 boost on. And I could always choose to have more boost coming from the pedal, but I'd rather have more of the amps natural distortion. So what I have here is again, I right click it, scene controller one set to 10. So scene controller one is currently assigned to all of the amps that I use in my preset here. You see it here on the double reverb and the Friedman and the rectifier. When we come over here to controllers and we go to scene controller one plus two, you can see I have numbers dialed in for all these scene controllers. And again, what a scene controller does is it allows you to digitally move the knob without having to take up another channel in the block, right? When you set up your fractal unit, you'll see that you have four channels accessible to you. Those are the four amplifiers that you can use throughout all eight of your scenes, and they're completely independent of each other. If I increase the bass on the rectifier, it won't increase the bass on the Friedman, but you're slightly limited to just those four amps unless you have a way to control them using these scene controllers. So I have 50% dialed in so that all my clean tones stay clean. And then you'll notice that four and five have a 30% boost, seven and eight have a 40% boost. And that's because I'm using the same amp, but I want more gain and saturation for the solo tone. And it works out incredibly well because again, I'm already using the input boost to tighten up and jumpstart the amp. So I don't wanna use any more of that. I just want more distortion from the amp. And it's a pretty noticeable difference too. I'll turn down the volume boost that I have real quick, just so it doesn't kind of cloud your judgment that way. But right now on the rhythm tone, I have the amount of distortion you just heard. <laughs> But when I go to the solo tone, I now have more distortion along with the other effects that I use for solos. And it'll just sustain and sustain for days. And that's what I want. So you get the idea there. And again, using scene controllers is a great way to get up to four different parameters of anything in any of your blocks to be changed from scene to scene without needing an additional channel or an additional block for it. Next up, we have my secret as to how I incorporate acoustic or piezo pickups into an existing electric guitar tone. So we're in the same preset here, number 450, Wedding Crasher, which is available for purchase. Just hit me up, my email is below where you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. So what I do here is I simply bypass the amp, I bypass the cab, and I use a recreation of a typical studio tone where you would have your acoustic guitar in a live room. There's a microphone, it's running into some preamps, and then it's going into the computer and being altered from there. So what I do to best emulate that is I'll typically switch to a lighter gauge pick just to give me a little bit more playroom, especially for strumming. It just sounds a little brighter, it compresses it a little bit, keeps it a little bit cleaner. I have a VCA compressor set pretty much always beyond. The threshold is pretty high, but I'm doing a lot of strumming stuff, so I need it to be consistent. And then I have an EQ here, and it looks pretty drastic, but this is what it takes for the guitar to really sit well in a mix and the context of an eight-piece wedding band. And then of course, to give it a little bit of depth, 
I have a medium room reverb here. The reverb will change here or there depending on how I'm feeling a particular season, but I haven't touched this in almost three months and I'm incredibly happy with how it's working out. And again, I don't need a separate preset. It has its own dedicated scene. I don't have to add anything. These are all blocks that I've already been using. We've seen the compressor, we've seen the reverb, and the EQ I also have on my solo tones as well. So this is utilizing the resources you already have for something totally different to save you time and effort later on. And it sounds just like a recorded acoustic guitar would. And it sounds less DI than most acoustic guitars I've plugged in direct like my Martin and my Taylor. And finally, I want to talk about utilizing the EQ block as a multi-purpose Swiss Army knife. You hear people talk about EQ a lot, and typically it's sculpting your tone further than you can with just the physical knobs or the mic placement, the type of speaker cabinet, you know what I'm talking about. But EQ can be used for several things while still maintaining what it's supposed to do, if that makes sense. You can use it to replace your filter block because you can just increase the level here. You can use it as an EQ, obviously I just said that, by adjusting the knobs here and using your different types of EQs. You can also use it to create a filter for lo-fi sounds. You can use it to get more gain and use it as a pseudo distortion pedal or a boost or an overdrive. EQ is incredibly versatile and where you place it in your signal chain will change the way that it reacts. Right now I have it post cabinet and I mainly using it for solo tones to help really cut through the mix, get rid of all the muddiness that comes from boosting the amp with additional gain and cutting the top end so that it's not ear piercing when I'm playing up in the higher register. If I go to my solo tone here, and again, I have no volume boost here on scene eight like I normally would. All right, so this is what it sounds like with everything bypassed. on we put the compressor on and it kind of helps to balance out taking out the low end by still making those notes really impactful But what we've done is we've cut all the mud out because otherwise those low notes can just really overreact and mess with the rest of the band. And you don't want a lot of low end when you're soloing. You want it to sit where the vocal normally be because during a guitar solo, you're replacing the vocalist. So you need a sound like you're in control. You are that lead melody. So we're gonna boost the mids a little bit, but we don't want a lot of So that's why we're cutting it out in here, using the compressor to help make those lower notes not as quiet. And then I add all my time-based effects to make it sound absolutely beautiful. Now, in order to still get that solo boost that I would normally have in the output block, again, I'll just type in plus five and it'll give me that five dB boost that I would normally have here or in a filter block and you'll, you'll notice the difference. If I were to have this before the amp, I'll show you how it changes quite a bit. We'll put that back down to zero, but with the EQ before, And then we add the level. It's not adding any actual volume, it's just adding more gain into the amp because again, the amp is seeing a 5 dB hotter signal going in front of it. So it's just compressing and distorting and breaking up sooner. 
I mean, the gain's already on 10, so you're just feeding it more. That You're not going to get a real volume boost having it in front of the amp. It has to be after the amp to actually hear the change in volume. But that's what makes EQ such a versatile piece of your signal chain. And that, my friends, is going to do it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed these fractal tips. I love making videos like this, especially ones centered around my favorite piece of gear of all time, which is the Fractal Audio Axe FX3. If you guys want to see more of this in the future, just drop a comment below and let me know what you want me to dive into. Deeper as we approach winter and my touring season slows down, I'm going to have more time to put out videos like this, but I want to hear from you to know exactly what you want more of. Until next time, everyone, keep on following your dreams.